All right, welcome back to another episode of our Guild with One playthrough of Prophecies. This episode is going to be a little bit different because uh, before we move on to the next area, I really want to try and get some Luxon faction to test out the Luxon NPC skills. And while farming Luxon faction, I'm going to take the opportunity to try and capture at least one or two elite skills for each um, profession. Uh, which I have very few of other professions. I think I have one Elementalist Elite skill. I especially want some Monk, um, Warrior, and probably Ranger, those three, and Necrom... Yeah, probably at least the base of the base um, professions. Warrior, Ranger, Monk, Necromancer. The other ones, if I get them, that's great. I already do have an Assassin one, but anyway... Um, I'm going to try and kill some birds with m multiple stones in this episode. So it's going to be exploration. It's going to be skill capping. It's going to be lux and farming. And it'll be fun. Hopefully we get some green drops. That would be awesome. Uh, um, I think I don't want to run the illusion henchmen, even though I found out the last episode they run shared burden. I'm going to try out this stolen speed. Build. So I want to have a lot of aggressive casting henchmen, which I guess that would include the <laughs> that would include the illusion actually. So we are gonna take illusion. Um, yeah, unfortunately the Luxes don't have a lot of caster henchmen. I guess. Um, let's go with some interrupts go with the archer archer is kind of a mixture of interrupt anyway so yeah i'm going to be going after i'm taking monk secondary so i'm going to be going after two hopefully two monk skills while also getting some faction go ahead and grab the shrine bonus here voice of grinth not the best but not the worst either I wish it extended this blessing to my, what do you call them, my henchmen. I'm going to get unnatural resistance. Oh, my screen's kind of messed up. Hold on a second. Let me fix this screen issue. That is better. Okay. Let's go. So the first ones are going to be like down in this area, I think. Right away. What is this? A necromancer? So I can come back for this necromancer one. I wonder what he had. Oh, it's a ranger. Melon drew shot. That's not bad. Pretty good one. I'm gonna try and spam so the idea with this is just spam stolen speed on as many enemies as possible and that's gonna buff my teammates to just do tons of damage to that guy trying to get my oh too slow I brought in power drain, but I I shouldn't have brought this actually. It's very unreliable for me to get energy from it. I do have some Jade quests, Jade C quests. Where are we at? Do I have any here? Yeah, Zeno Squad. Um, I don't know where that's at. Oh, it's all the way down there. Never mind. love clumsiness against these assassins it's funny the assassins have siphon strength which is basic it's very similar to stolen speed but it's an assassin skill it steals their attack damage it makes them deal less damage for each hit it's pretty cool you look at that recharge look at the recharge when i cast like look how fast everything charges up wow this is a this is fun 
it's kind of like an even buffed up version of uh, Mantra of Recovery. I liked Mantra of Recovery a lot too. The Prophecy skill that buffs your recharge rate. But this, man. Spells targeting these foes are cast by you or your allies take 50%. Actually, this shouldn't buff my recharge. Wonder. Oh, it's because my fast casting is all the way maxed up to level 13. That's why it seems extra fast. Nice. I got that the last second. Trying to get as many hexes on them as possible. Plus accumulated pain. That uh, arcane conundrum actually is pretty good against assassins because their primary healing ability is an enchantment spell. Alright, here's the first monk boss, KC Stormray. It's a pretty cool name. Kind of like that one. Not gonna get the interrupt on the monk. Monk spells are just generally really fast. I wonder if stolen speed and arcane conundrum do they stack? Yeah, like it's taking like three seconds to cast healing spells. I should have brought more interrupters actually. Take advantage of that increased casting time. Alright. Capping the first one. Healing Light. Elite spell. Heal target ally for 40 health. If your enchantment if your target has an enchantment, you gain one energy. So very spammable, very low energy healing spell. And very high chance of your target having an enchantment, especially if you're the one enchanting them. Um cool. That's a good one. Next one, I think, is farther south. Keep going down this direction. And I think after beating that last mission, we got like 5,000 or 6,000 Luxon points. But doing missions, um, getting, that, getting that reward is quite a good way of getting Luxon faction. And defeating bosses, I think you get like 125 faction per boss that you fight. That's why it's, I'm already up to 8,000. But what do we need to get 100,000 for Friend of the Luxons? Yeah, I still need, I still need 45,000 more for Lux and faction. I don't know if I'll be able to get it. Head down this way. I'm just gonna be fighting everyone. Any, anyone and everyone is fair game right now. I wish you got Lux and Faction for taking out the spirits. That would be sweet. Might be able to abuse that a little bit. I want to go too far out of the way. I don't want to meander around too much. I think if I had one more energy management spell, this would be even stronger because I could spam a little bit more. But Arcane Conundrum does give me a little bit of a refund. So I should be casting that first or second in battles. So that whenever the enemy dies, I get an, a little bit of a reset. Oh, he's just going straight after the spirits. Yeah, see my, my energy popped up. Sons, this is the second. This is the second uh, monk boss. 
all of the Naga bosses have like that some sort of double S sound in their name. Kind of funny. Because they're snakes. <laughs> it's obvious. They're snakes. Yeah, power drain doesn't work against spells. Or... I had a pop up come up. Sorry about that. And get some interrupts on this. Oh, Signet faked me out. Alright, these warriors are getting a little too close to me. I'm gonna make sure I put clumsiness on them. Ah, oh, missed it. So it's using blessed blessed light. Rolling speed doesn't quite slow it down as much as I want it to. It keeps spamming signet with devotion as well. It's kind of annoying. Oh. There's too many signets. Signa rejuvenation. Alright, we got it anyway. Now that there's no healer, it should be okay. Come on, Rune of Minor Vigor. I've been asking for this thing forever. Will we get it? Ta da No, of course not. Alright, we got both monk abilities. Blessed Light. Alright, very nice. And a skill point. So we get a little refund there. 54 skill points. Okay, so two really good monk spells. One is healing, pow healing prayers. One is divine favor. Blessed Light, heal target ally for 10 health or for, for health and remove one condition, condition and one hex. That is really good. Look how spammable that is. Super fast casting, very low cooldown. 10 energy is quite high, but um there could be ways to get some energy management for that two very good spells so we have if we have two monks uh heroes in nightfall we can we have two elite skills we can use to give them uh pretty decent builds uh next uh what is next let's see okay next up we are back in zoshivros we're gonna check out the Boreas Seabed, and I'm gonna go hunting for some warrior elite skills. I think there's a really... I remember fighting a boss right north of here, and then there's a, a really famous boss. I think it's over this way, or maybe up this way. In one of these grassy areas. Um, so yeah, I'll be able to get two warrior elite skills. Uh, how do I get out of here, though? Oh, I need to go north exit. There we go. Boreas Seabed. There we go. Yeah, so we're getting two warrior skills. We just got the two monk skills. Now we're getting two warrior skills. All that's going to be left is a ranger and necromancer. Do I have enough money? I've, I've been buying Signet of Capture. I'm so poor right now. I'm going to have to sell off some of these materials. But right now the prices are not really that great for them um so we'll try and save as much money as possible so i'm not gonna get the other shrine buff i'm just gonna get the luxon buff it's pretty good three health regeneration and 25 maximum health that's not bad i'm running crippling anguish this time because i think we're up against a lot of fighters and stuff so might be nice to um blow them down keep empathy up on all of them I took down some of my fast casting to go into domination I think that's good empathy is really strong here and Luxon these outcasts have a lot of like assassins and warriors 
the stolen speed was really only great for um casters who's this person up here is this a quest up here yeah there's an exclamation mark let's check out this person this looks interesting doing some quests might give us some gold and more lux and faction so that's fine arani what do you want Le oh what oh i have a quest where did i i i don't know what what is this i can use my contacts okay i just completed a quest i guess that i didn't even know i had a letter from home i have no idea when i got that but that's a free 250 gold a thousand lux in experience so we are up to almost 10,000 lux in faction again all right where's the other boss um where is he at thought he was just over here did i take him out already i don't think so oh he's right here okay Make sure I keep empathy on him. Natural Signet's pretty nice. Free damage. Free with no um, energy cost. And they're definitely going to have a Hex or Enchantment on them. So, Unnatural Signet combined with Energy Tap. I think I should be totally fine with um, energy management now. Okay, what does he have? Whirling Axe. Elite skill. If Whirling Axe hits... You strike for plus 5 damage and any stance being used by your target ends. This attack cannot be blocked. And it's only 4 adrenaline. That's pretty sweet. I think this would be useful against um, some of the bosses that have really strong stances. Like Shiro, for example. Very cool. No green drops yet. The next one, I think... I think it... I know for a fact it's in this green area... But it's either, yeah, it's somewhere either this uh, west side or north side. We're going to loop around. Nice damage there. Yeah, this build is pretty fun because it has the damage numbers from Empathy, Accumulated Pain, and Natural Signet. has a nice... Deep wound from an accumulated pain. <clears throat> and um, has degeneration from crippling anguish. That, and, and interrupts. It's got it's got a lot of a lot of good stuff here. Some damaging skills, some draining skills, good energy management. Mesmer skill bars are pretty like Except as long as you have good energy management and you have a few hexes to cycle through, it's really hard, I think, to mess up a. Oh, I'm using the wrong weapon too. I should be using my this. Yeah, I'll be using this one. Um, it's really hard to mess up a mesmer skill bar. It used to be one of the hardest classes to play again or play as because there's so much like thinking involved like which person should i cast on how to interrupt but if you pick the if you just pick hexes like i think i think mesmer is pretty noob friendly actually like it's not as straightforward as warrior probably because warrior is just like see enemies hit enemies but I think it's pretty easy to have an ineffective warrior skill bar. I might be wrong. What do you think is the most noob friendly profession in Guild Wars now? Like not back in the day, but if you, if someone was to come to Guild Wars in 2024, what do you think would be a good starter class? I'm saying I'm I think I'm going to stick with Mesmer or possibly like, even Ranger is a little bit complicated. 
with the uh, preparations and stuff. I'm, I think I'm gonna say either Re Mesmer or Necromancer are probably the two easiest or noob friendly um, classes. Anyway, what's your pick? Put it in the comments. I'm curious. And it also might depend on campaign as well, right? Like, probably for prof prophecies, like, warrior is still probably pretty straightforward as a class. But that might, that might play a role. In 2024, definitely Monk is probably the least um, recommended build for someone, or a pro profession for someone just now starting Guild Wars. Even though I love Monk, I really loved playing Monk back in the day. And in PvP, I think Monk, uh, Monk gameplay is just, whoops, I casted the wrong person. Monk gameplay in PvP is just so exciting. So many clutch saves and just like, yeah, love watching some monk PVP action. Where is this enemy? I'm pretty sure I'm going the right way. I mean, either way, I'm getting lots of faction. Ooh, a fell blade. Fell blade is one of the coolest looking skins. Check that out. I love this this sword skin. It reminds me of like uh, Cloud's Buster Sword a little bit with that little, but it has like a little curve at the end of it, and it's like a really cool like black metal. Definitely, they were inspired by Buster Sword, right? Very cool. Just the disrespect I have for these enemies. <laughs> Admiring the sword that I just picked up. I'm casting Empathy here even though they're going to be casting spells and not damaging up close. I'm just using it to be able to use this accumulated pain. They need to have two hexes on them for the deep wound and damage to go off. It's a really strong deep wound. 19 seconds. It's a long time. Still love the crippling anguish for only five, five uh, energy minus eight health regener degeneration is really good. We hit ten thousand again, ten thousand Luxon. I just spent ten thousand on like Jadeite shards, so able to get Luxon faction pretty fast through doing missions and these kind of grinding. Alright, I think I'm going the wrong way. I don't want to look it up, but I might have to. I'm looking for a warrior boss by the name of SS Kai. Sky. Very famous. I always remember him as an enemy. Very cool uh, boss. I mean, these guys are very easy. Look, my my teammates are just not taking any damage. Could pro I I could probably even do hard mode. I should I should have attempted hard mode actually, and we can get some bonus faction I believe. Maybe some better drops. More experience for sure. Yeah, I should have done that. Yeah, I guess he's on this north side then. Oh. 
Whoops, I thought he must I thought he was gonna have a hex on him, so I recast it. Without checking first. More rot wallows. Guardians. I might have gone the complete opposite way. I'm pretty sure he's not like in the open sea. I thought he was on this green side. Maybe he's on this green side actually. So let's cut. Let's just cut across here. Cut across here. We're going to cut across the ocean here. Yeah, he's dead before I can even get off accumulated pain. Look how slow he is. Oh my goodness. That shared burden spell is so good. The Seaguard Hala uses it. <laughs> They're just crawling to us. No attacks. Want to put empathy on the rangers. And clumsiness works on the archers as well. Look how slow he's attacking. Look, I put empathy on him, but it's not even going off because he's not even a getting a single attack off. Spiked Targe. That's a cool skin. 75 enemies slain. I should have put... Crippling anguish on the warrior, I think. It's okay. Oh, why did I waste that? Oh, accumulated pain does damage no matter what. I forget about that. So even if even if they're not suffering for two hexes, it's a it's just a flat 71 damage right right off. It's nice. So it's not wasted, just not using its full potential, I guess. I wish Unnatural Signet did damage to foes in the, nearby my target, not adjacent to. Very unlikely to get that extra damage off, actually. So 55 damage for nothing. Pretty nice. Fourteen bones, nice. Yeah, bones are selling for like only 220 per 10. Not the best, but we have to. It could sell them to get more skill app signets. Oh, that's some good damage. Just so slow. It's a good idea bringing Seaguard Hala actually. Oh, Seaguard Hala uses accumulated pain as well. I'm almost using a similar build, just I'm using Crippling Anguish. That's it. 
I should have gone full domination. Oh, that's a uh, Milodestus the Wrangler. Wrangler. That's a um, pet ranger. That might be fun to capture. Yeah, let's come back and get that one. Is there an air? Is there like an outpost over here? That'd be convenient. No. Okay. Milo Milodestus. That's a pretty cool name. It using pounce. Disrupting lunge. Ferocious strike. Okay. It'd be fun to run on a hero with a pet. Can't capture it, of course. I'm not running ranger. It's good to know. I wish I could mark on the map. Like, this is where the ranger was. I've been playing a lot of Valheim, and you're allowed to, like, mark stuff on the map. To remember where stuff is. Oh, that's not it. Where is it at? Maybe down here? Or maybe up here? Let's check up this way. Oops. Fight's still going on. Okay, I'm gonna check up here. Honestly, I think we might be overkill with the healing. Like maybe I didn't need to bring a, a, a protection. I could have left Sister Tai or Seaguard Gita. Probably, I, probably I could have left um, the protection monk way. Kind of too too much healing, I think. So they're like not doing any damage, and it's kind of taking a while to take take out these mobs. Okay, let's check. Maybe it's up here. Love the look at that like temple area up there. Cool. Oh, there's an assassin. There's an assassin skill up there. The empty palm. Whatever we fought before. It might be nice to capture for a hero. Just crawling to us. No damage for you guys, I'm sorry. You're just not gonna be hurting us. No chance. There he is, finally. Wow, it's way closer than I thought. I went all the way around here. Oh my gosh. Oh, it would be so great if he drops this weapon. Green item. Actually, let's try it. Let's try and do our... I probably can't solo him, actually. I'm not running a good enough build. Zero healing. Oh, he dropped a gold. Um, Grawl, though. There's probably some builds you can run to farm this guy. He has a really good sword. Alright, elite skill. Dragon Slash. 10 adrenaline. If Dragon Slash hits, you strike for 10 damage and gain one strike of adrenaline. So it's kind of once you get once the battle good gets to like a certain length, um, this benefits this benefits longer battles, I guess, because once you get up to 10 adrenaline, you can kind of almost spam it or spam your other spell other skills he's running a really bad um skill build because he doesn't really have anything that gives him adrenaline like these are all energy base which are good but i wonder why they picked this 
build that he's running. Really bad. All right, we have two monk skills, two warrior skills. Let's get a ranger and necromancer now. Uh, so I'll go back to Zos Shivros. Let's see what we can get. All right, for the next uh, uh, elite skill, I'm grabbing my necromancer secondary. And we're going to go to Maishong Hills and get an elite skill really quick. And then we will just have um, Ranger left. So we will have gotten skills from every profession. In a previous episode, I got one from... I got an a, a Elementalist, so I'm kind of counting that already. Well, I haven't capped one yet, but... Well, let's fight these guys really quick. Kappas. I'm going to go with a Domination build this time so that we can do some more damage. Especially since our Illusion is pretty much was running all the same skills we already had. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. I should have gotten Mind Rack. I forgot about that. I brought Wastrel's Worry instead. But actually, with all of the interrupts and energy drain that we have, kind of possible to uh, activate pretty regularly. We're standing all together, and these shatter stones are really hurting. Oh my goodness. Yikes. Well, that was rough. We got 11,000 faction. Only 44. <laughs> is that right? 44 more to go. Something like that. Uh, I don't want to fight these guys <laughs> anymore. They hurt. Uh, let's avoid them. I'm getting a necromancer skill, I believe, is up this way. There he is. Sesk. A really um dangerous name but i gotta pronounce it correctly desk woe spreader pretty cool name he's using curses i believe look at that damage let me make sure I get empathy up on these guys. Wow, where's all of our healing? We're doing tons of damage, but they're out damage they're uh, out damaging our healing still. Protect, let's protect our healer, people. Healer is important. Okay. Discord, if target foe is suffering from a condition and under the effects of a hex or an enchantment, that foe suffers 30 damage. And I believe that damage is not affected by armor. This was a super, super powerful skill back in the day before they buffed Mesmer. Uh, because you could run triple necromancers in a build called Discord Way. And it was crazy powerful. I mean, it's still technically powerful. It's just... Um, because of Mesmer's being so strong and having a lot of like interrupts and things, it's generally better to run Mesmer's, but still, very cool spell to have. Might be able to put it on a Necromancer hero for some high damage action. Alright, so that is Necromancer. Last one we need to get is Ranger, so I need to go back to base. And for this one, I'm back at Zoshivros. I'm going to go back to Boreas Seabed. 
And I want to capture that ferocious strike. I think it was... Where was it at again? It was here, right? I think it was... I think it was over here to the right. I'm going to go ahead and pick this up because it's... Some extra faction. Yeah, I think it'll be fun having a ranger hero later on and then running some pets. Always good times. Oh, these, these guys are running expel hexes. That's annoying. I'll just spam energy surge. That'll teach him. No energy for you. Yeah, the energy sur mind rack and energy surge combo is really good. Makes them lose 11 energy and take 125 damage. I just wish mind rack would affect. It should have. I wish it would affect like adjacent enemies as well. I think that would make it a little bit better. Probably too powerful at that point, but. It used to be a really underwhelming spell. I remember back in the day. It was like, it would only do damage whenever the enemy's energy went reached zero. So it was a really... Almost impossibly useless uh, ability to have. But they added some extra things to it to make it quite nice. Fast cooldown, fa uh, cheap casting time. I think it was over this way, wasn't it? Uh, oh, nice. It got the 100 damage from Wastrel's Worry. Level 28, I feel like should give more... Lux and faction. They should give more Lux and faction depending on the um, uh, level of the enemy. That's fair. Yeah, here's the boss. Massive damage. Love going some energy surge. It's just so satisfying. Just click and they're done. No thinking. It does effective damage to every possible enemy. Don't need to worry about, you know, interrupting. You just get rid of all the energy, all of their health, all in one go. Person we're after. Okay, and now we have one elite skill for every class. These these um these bosses are quite close to each other. So you can just make a few runs through these areas. And what does Ferocious Strike do? Elite pet attack. Your animal companion attempts a ferocious strike that deals 13 damage. If that attack hits, you gain adrenaline and energy. So this could be used as a full-on Beastmaster um, build. You could run um, Ranger like bow attacks that use energy, or you can even go melee with this and use some adrenal skills. Uh, pretty, pretty um, flexible skill here. That'll be fun to use on a hero later. Um, probably wouldn't be useful for us as a Mesmer. Can't really think. I mean, getting that energy is not bad. 
Yeah, it would be. It, it could work as a caster also for some energy management, but then you would have to give up an. You would have to give up an elite skill. So, yeah, probably not. Like maybe maybe a monk could run it. Nah, those elite monk skills are too strong. Yeah, probably just good for a ranger or possibly a warrior. Um, best. Maybe even assassin could maybe make it work. Anyway, uh, let's take a, a look at all the skills we got. We got Ferocious Strike from Ranger. We got um, for a warrior, we got Whirling Axe, Dragon Slash. For Monk, we got Blessed Light and Healing Light. Necromancer, we got uh, Discord. Oh, we also have Virulence. Yeah, I have quite a few Necromancer skills, actually. Um, Elementalist, we have Lightning Surge. So the only ones we're missing, Assassin, Ritualist, and obviously we can't get Paragon or Dervish yet. I think it's a pretty good, pretty good um, turn of skill points and i do have an assassin one somewhere right don't i have yeah i have an assassin's promise so i have the only the only class i'm missing is ritualist i don't have any ritualist skills but we can pick one up maybe at the beginning of next mission or in the next mission that we run but this was a pretty fun build a little bit exploring a little bit of faction farming we ended up getting like three point or no 4.5 K faction so uh yeah if, the, if you don't like this this kind of content um don't worry i'll be back on the main playthrough going through missions if you do like the content hit a like and uh comment and then i'll be sure to do more of these kind of laid back uh exploring videos in the future i know i know i've seen a couple people just enjoying whatever i put out but Having some direction and having some idea of what you guys like helps me come up with uh, new video ideas. So anyway, until next time, peace.